Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Tuesday CT. This is a video we're doing by request on matrices because so many students are searching for how the heck do you do these matrices on the ACT or if you're looking at your math test and you're wondering what the heck are matrices useful for, you are not alone. This is a topic that's tested on the ACT, but it's not tested very often. You might see one, maybe two. A lot of times you'll see zero, but if you're shooting for a top ACT math score, it's really useful to know the basics of what the ACT tests about matrices, and then if you're going on to statistics or computer science or something in college, you can actually learn why they're useful. We're just gonna talk about just what you need to know about them for the purposes of this test. All right, so let's start with the basics. So matrices are referred to by their dimensions. So for example, this is a three by two matrix. So we talk about it in terms of rows and then columns. Three rows, two columns, it's a three by two matrix. All right, that was easy. Let's go on to the next point. This is called scalar multiplication. It sounds really fancy, it's not that hard. Scalar multiplication, and you don't need to know what that term is you just need to know how to recognize it, is when we're just multiplying a matrix by an ordinary number. So if you see something like this, this means we're doing three times this matrix. And all we're going to do is multiply each term by three to get its corresponding product, its corresponding result in our product matrix. So three times four gives us 12, three times three gives us nine, three times two is six, and three times one, three, and that is our answer. All right, also pretty easy. Let's look at matrix addition. This is something else you might be asked to do on the ACT. Also pretty straightforward. When we're adding matrices, we're just going to add the corresponding numbers to get our result over here. So we're gonna look at whatever the first number is in the first row and first column. Two and three gives us five. Three and two gives us five. Five and one gives us six. One and zero gives us one, etc. So we're just adding the corresponding pairs of numbers. Now, something that is important to note is that you can only add matrices if they have the exact same dimensions. Otherwise, you'd end up with like something weird. You wouldn't have anything to do with these numbers or any spots to put them in. So if you see matrices that have two different dimensions and the ACT asks you to add them, the answer is D. You can't, you can't do that calculation. So it's important to know for that reason. All right, I say the trickiest for last multiplying matrices. Okay, so when you are multiplying matrices, it's different than adding matrices. You need to have, the first matrix needs to have the same number of rows as, actually sorry, columns as the second one has rows. So we have this matrix has two columns and this has two rows. Yes, got that right. <laughs> two columns and two rows. So we're basically switching up the pairs here. So adding matrices, you have to have the same dimensions. This one we have to, this one has to have the same number of rows as the other one has the same number of columns. All right, and our resulting matrix is going to have the same number of columns as the first one and the same number of rows as the second one. And I'm gonna show you why in just a minute. So we would actually have nine numbers in this one because we have three rows in the first one and three columns in the second one. All right, so let's talk about how to get some of these answers here. So let's say we want to find the second row, second column number right here. What we're gonna do is we're gonna use the numbers from the second row in the first matrix and the second column in the second matrix. So I've highlighted those here. And so the way that you can remember this, I like to chant this mantra to myself when I'm doing matrices. So let's say I wanted to do the third row, first column. I'd go third row, first column, third row, first column. And I would look at the first one and say third row, first column, third row, first column, and think of that way through. So you wanna kinda of start and work backwards. Start with where you want the number and then go back and find the rows or the columns you're looking at. All right, so you got this far. We know we want this second row, second column. So we're looking at second row, second column. Now, how do you compute that? Well, what you're going to do is you are going to multiply the corresponding digits and then add them together. 
So we're looking at that first one here in the first row, in the row zero, and we're going to multiply it by three. And then we're going to take the second one, two, and multiply it by the second one in that column, six. So we have zero times three plus two times six. This gives us zero. This gives us 12. So our answer is 12. So that means right here the number is going to be 12. So we would do that for any digit in here to find that answer. Now, don't worry. The ACT is not going to give you anything this complex. We're not going to, it's not going to ask you to fill out this entire matrix because in order to do that we'd have to do a lot of calculations. So what it's going to do is it's going to give you something smaller, it's going to give you a matrix with a lot of zeros, or it's just going to ask you to find just one point in that matrix. But if you know all the rules, you're going to be able to do whatever the ACT throws at you. Piece of cake. Now, there is one thing about matrices that the ACT tests that I'm not going to talk about here. It's the determinant. It sounds kind of scary, but it's actually one of the easier things that the ACT throws at you, and it usually just gives you the formula to plug numbers into. So. We're not going to talk about it here, but if you have questions about determinants or anything about the ACT matrices, particularly since we're talking about that in this video, but anything about the ACT, you can put the, your question in the comments below and we will get back to you. So thanks for tuning in for this episode of Tuesday ACT on matrices. You can find out a whole lot more about the ACT at act.magoosh.com, and I will see you next Tuesday CT.